Okay, back. Um, okay, so Dark Charles Morton, for whatever cause that we don't exactly know <coughs> or reason, and there's going to be a lot of that. <laughs> That's going to be a theme, pretty much. Uh, was went to went, went to Leiden and graduated. He uh, he has a, his doctoral doctoral dissertation dissertation is actually available on microfilm. That's been scanned. It's in digital form. I haven't been able. It's in, written in Latin. Um, I'd probably have a tough time reading it. But um, it's basically on the whooping cough. <laughs> After he did that, he moved to. Kindle Westmoreland County. Now, I gather that the people that have written... Okay, I'd say there's a good chance that the people have written entries for the Dictionary of National Biography for him have supposed that he was born in Westmoreland County because the first records of him appearing after going to Leiden um have him at Kendall Westmoreland County. Now, the records about Dr. Charles Morton in Kendall Westmoreland County, I don't know how much there are. I, If I remember right, someone looked and there wasn't much. When he was at Kendall Westmoreland County, he met Murray Berkeley. Murray Berkeley was the daughter of... Um, I have this right. I actually know. I know here she was a niece of Lady Betty Germain, and that, that'll be important. Very important. It could be very important, or it may be just a coincidence. Lady Betty, Betty Germain, the Ber Berkeleys were um, descendants of one of the King Edwards. I'm not sure exactly which one. There's so many facts for me to remember. You know, I have a little cheat sheet here of the article I wrote on Wikipedia. It doesn't mean I'm going to remember everything. <clears throat> he had one daughter, at least, that we know of. Her name was Elizabeth... Um, Elizabeth Morton, and she was baptized May 26, 1745 at Kendall. So that was, that's slam dunk solid. Now I have yet to find a death record for um, his wife, Mary Berkeley Morton. There is a death record at Twickingham. There's a lot of confusion. I think there's been some people that have just kind of... Um, accepted some answers that really shouldn't have been accepted in making their entries in the Dictionary of National Biography, and we'll get to that in a number of ways. But I digress. Um, there is a death entry for a Mary Berkeley at Tw Mary Berkeley at Twickenham, Along with some other Berkeleys that lived at Twickenham, coincidentally, also Dr. Morton, Dr. Charles Morton, lived at Twickenham. That's where his residence was, and, and it it was in the residence of um, the blue stocking lady. God, I forgot her name. Lady Elizabeth Montague. Here it is. <laughs> But I'm, I'm digressing. He, he did have a place down there, but let's get back to the subject at hand. He had one daughter, and somewhere in there, um, his wife, Mary Berkeley, died, but she probably wasn't buried as Mary Berkeley. Probably was buried as Mary Morton. I haven't been yet to find a record of her death, so we don't know. I don't know what happened to her. Um, now, his daughter, um, Elizabeth Morton, ended up marrying a man named James Danzy. And they're, they're, 
they have numerous ancestors. Elizabeth Morton, Elizabeth Morton and James Danzy were the parents of Mary, Mary Danzy, who married a man named John Freeman in 1798. Elizabeth Danby, who, Danzy, <laughs> who married Richard Barnaby. Now, according to um, the 1812 edition of Collins Peerage, on page 622, Barry Berkeley died March 10, 1755. It doesn't say where, though. I haven't been able to find it corroborating entry. Now, the latest edition of the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography is very harsh on Dr. Charles Morton, and wrongly so. And in one ways that it, it, it's harsh on him is it it says that it, it blind, blindly accepts the death record in Edward Ironside's uh, Histories and Antiquities of Twickingham of the Mary Berkey, Berkeley death record but the mistake that is made there unless they got a divorce which I don't know I don't think so and why would she you know I don't know about the conventions at the time you know no other information is presented to solidify that that Mary Berkeley is in fact you know why would she go by the name Berkeley you know anyway, I, I, I'm, my assumption is a little bit Americanized but Nonetheless, that that death record took place a few years after Dr. Charles Morton married the woman that was born, Mary Pratt, who became Lady Sa Lady Savile and Lady Wallace, and then Dr. Char and then <laughs> then Mrs. Mary Morton. And I have some suspicions just just based upon the, fam the familiar look of her. That maybe Charles Carr was was maybe the, she was very old when they got married, but maybe Charles Carr was actually the son of Elizabeth Pratt. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so on September 13, 1744, Dr. Morton married Miss Mary Berkeley, niece of uh, Lady Betty Germain at Kendall. They had one child, May 26, 1745. That is uh, almost exactly nine months later. And, okay, so I already discussed some of the descendants, and there are a lot. <laughs> there are a lot. That thing just branches out. Now, to add a little bit, of the, I, I guess I'll go into a little bit of the complexity here. Um, a few things that, that touch. Um... No, I'll just go down this thing because the, the, it's it's just it, there's so many different factors. It's hard to have a straight conversation. <laughs> okay, so in June of uh, I'm just going to read my entry for now. In June of 1754, Lady Veer, Lady Veer, wife of Veer Buclerk. Now I'll just give you a little bit of background on this. The Baron Veer was a descendant, although illegitimate, of one of the King Charles's. Right. Also, coincidentally, Lady Montague was a descendant of the King Charles. I had like a billion children, ninety, most of whom which were real, you know, illegitimate. He just had affairs with everybody under the sun. But um, anyway, Doctor Morton kind of was surrounded by people that were associated with those descendants. I found that interesting. Okay. In June of 1754, I'm just digressing a little bit. In June of 1754, uh, Lady, Lady, Lady Veer, the wife of Veer Buclerk, wrote a letter of recommendation for Dr. Morton to temporarily replace Dr. Connors, who had recently resigned. And this was to get basically to get a job as at the Foundling Hospital. So what happened is, is at, first he practiced in Kindle, and I guess I'm guessing after um, Mary Berkeley died in 1755, it seems like it's a year later. I would expect that she died in. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to say I, I suspect, and this is speculation, but, you know, first of all, I don't have an original record of this death date for Mary Berkeley in Collins' peerage, but I, I'm almost guessing she died March 10th, 17, 
1754, because in June of 1754, just a few months later under that scenario, she would have been, Dr. Morton would have moved to London at that point <coughs> and met up and made friends or <coughs> what have you with Lady Vere, the wife of Vere Bu Bu Blue Clerk, to um, recommend that a job for um, Dr. Morton to work at the Foundling Hospital to replace Dr. Conyers, who had resigned. Makes sense to me. Um, the, the recommendation was followed through in July of 1754, and he worked there for a few years, and there are even uh, kind of like a yearbook for the state of Britain, even on Google Books, it'll list Dr. Morton as one of the, the um, trustees of the Foundling Hospital. The Foundling Hospital, and this is why this is why I suppose that he may have that Charles Carr may have been adopted. And again, this is at a point of life when Dr. Morton may have thought that I I I'm not gonna have a son. My wife is has died. Just to keep that in mind. But it's kind of early for Charles Carr's birth, so let's back off a little bit there, but you know, it's a whole complicated thing. Um, he was finally, you know, he's finally got appointed to his job, and um, then he worked at the Family Hospital, and Family Hospital is a place where children are just found with no parents. They're foundlings, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like Casper Hauser kind of foundlings, and they're they're brought over to this hospital and taken care of over there. It's like an like an adoption place. So he worked there for a few years, and then he then by 1756 he was appointed the under librarian of the British Museum. Now, a little bit of details I just found out today is that the 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 uh, British Royal Society uh, was very very integral very instrumental in the starting of the what's now today the British Museum and what was the British Museum at the time and Charles Morton at least at one point was a secretary in the Royal Society and he was a member for a long time and uh, at one point was corresponding with some pretty big names that I'll flash in a, probably in a later presentation about uh, tracking the um, the, they call it the trans transgression or trans, the crossing of Venus over the Sun, where, where Venus is in between the Sun and the Earth. It's like a it's like a lunar eclipse, but on a much smaller scale. And that was in 1761. That I didn't have here before. Now, Doctor, we I don't know if Doctor Morton immediately got married after his wife died. I'm guessing 17 or not. We don't know what he did at all. But we do know that on uh, August 25th, 1767, maybe I should stop here and see how big my file is. Um, yes, okay, stop. 